Hi guys, Marcus here and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update December 24th, 2020. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday and this is episode 325. Now because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, click CC for English subs. I create them myself. In today's episode, Shockwave 2 with Andy Lau premieres. And I revisit what wuxia dramas are and why I love them. But first, Merry Christmas Eve everyone! Wherever you are and whatever you do, I hope you have all your shopping done already and can relax by the Christmas tree with a good strong glass of eggnog. FYI, an average 8 ounce cup of eggnog has 340 calories, half of which are from fat. And I used to drink that stuff straight out of the box. I don't do that anymore. Anyway, may your Christmas be a joyous one and your Christmas stockings be stuffed with your favorite gifts. On with the show, here's what's recently premiered. A Love So Romantic is a costume romance drama starring Yang Zhiwen and Ye Shengjia and it premiered earlier today. Yang Zhiwen plays a flower girl who gets mixed up in a sibling contract with the prominent Gu family's young master, played by Ye Shengjia. The drama is slated for 36 episodes and is available on Wii TV with English subs. Unique Lady 2 is a costume drama starring Jade Chang and Simon Gong and it also premiered earlier today. It follows the story of a girl who gets sucked into a video game and to win and get out, she must find her true love. However, in the process, she gains the affection of four suave dudes and falls in love with the people and place in the video game. The drama is a continuation of its first season and has an interesting premise, albeit one that's been done many times. If I got sucked into a video game or time travel to an ancient time and I fell in love with the place, the people and the time, would I want to come back? Probably not. At least not for a little while until I start missing having clean water and Wi-Fi. Anyway, Unique Lady is slated for 27 episodes and is available on YouTube with English subs. Shockwave 2 is a Hong Kong movie starring Andy Lau and Sean Lau and it hit theaters earlier today. Andy Lau stars as a former bomb disposal expert who becomes the prime suspect in a terrorist attack. Sean Lau plays his former colleague who shockingly decides to turn him in. And Nini plays his ex-girlfriend who also happens to be the head of an anti-terrorist group. Do I help cover for my friend or do I turn him in because it's my duty? That seems to be the prevalent theme. I watched Shockwave 1 and to be honest, I enjoyed it but I didn't super love it like I wasn't talking about it for days on end. I will still watch Shockwave 2 mostly because of the inclusion of Sean Lau in the cast. He wasn't in the first. I don't talk about Sean Lau that much because he doesn't do Chinese dramas, but he is one of my top 3 favorite Chinese actors. And that's it for what's recently premiered. Moving on, here's my take on wuxia dramas and why I love them. Over a year ago, I did a segment about wuxia dramas and because I've been talking about them quite a bit in recent episodes, I've decided to revisit it. Those of you who have followed my channel for a while would know that my favorite Chinese drama genre is the wuxia genre. But what is that exactly? Is that just a costume drama? An historical drama? Well, not exactly. Wuxia literally translates to martial hero, so a wuxia drama really means a drama that features martial heroes. And although martial heroes can exist in any time period, for example, Batman and Spider-Man are technically martial heroes, when we say wuxia, we generally refer to martial heroes in ancient China. Let's examine my favorite wuxia drama, Nirvana and Fire. Nirvana and Fire tells the story of a brilliant strategist who helps an unfavored prince battle for the throne. For those of you who are thinking of watching it, the synopsis I just told is an oversimplified and spoiler free version. The actual story is way more complex and has way more layers to it. Nirvana and Fire is considered a wuxia drama because it has all its elements, swordsmen, battles, jianghu, which I will get into later. But it also has one unique trait that makes it, that makes it stand out from other wuxia dramas. Its protagonist is actually not a wuxia or martial hero. Mei Changsu, expertly portrayed by Hu Ke, is not a martial arts expert. 
On the contrary, he's weak and brittle and constantly sick. Where his strength lies is in his brilliant mind. So what are some of the elements of wuxia dramas? Well, there are many. Elements of fantasy, such as the use of magic powers and appearance of supernatural beings are very common. Romance is another one that's a recurring element. Although these elements are constant in wuxia dramas, they're not requisites. The only requisite is the martial arts element. In other words, the characters must know some form of martial art, and it has to be a reasonably important part of the story. So when you look at a drama like, say, the story of Minglan, it is a costume drama, but I don't consider it from the wuxia genre. Similarly, a drama like Rui's Royal Love in the Palace, which deals mainly with inner palace schemes and machinations, is an historical drama, but I don't consider it wuxia. Then you have a drama like The Untamed, which has many wuxia themes like chivalry and courage, but is technically termed a xianxia drama. That's a whole discussion for another video. Another concept that's ever present in wuxia dramas is the concept of jianghu. Jianghu literally translates to lakes and rivers, and in wuxia dramas, it refers to the martial arts world. I usually refer to it in my videos as the pugilistic world. So in wuxia dramas, there's always the stuff that happens in the palace. There's the emperor and his royal subjects, and outside of the palace walls, there are the commoners. Then there's a separate world where martial artists roam, and they distance themselves from the government. They have their own rules and live their own way of life. Instead of getting involved with politics, they go around living by their code, performing righteous deeds and solving problems, you know, stuff like that. So why do I love wuxia dramas? I guess it comes down to the whole escape part of it, really. As you guys know, dramas are a great way to immerse yourself in a completely different world. Of course, the drama still has to be well-made. I'd rather watch a well-made, modern rom-com than a crappy wuxia drama. And believe me, there are plenty of crappy ones out there. And it's Thursday today, so time for another segment of my predictions for this Sunday's Top 10 Champions. As you guys know, every Sunday we do the top 10 Chinese dramas and actors at the moment. In this segment, I'll give my thoughts and predictions to who the champions will be. My prediction for this Sunday's top web drama is Legend of Fei with Zhou Liying and Wang Yibo. I believe they're going to retain their position from last week and make it two weeks in a row at number one. I'm currently following the drama and up to episode 10, but by the time this Sunday rolls by, I will probably be all caught up. My prediction for this Sunday's top TV drama is Like a Flowing River 2 starring Wang Kai and Yang Shuo. I haven't started the drama yet, but I will get to it. I've been waiting for this sequel for quite a while. Wang Kai is a darling to Chinese TV viewers. I remember at one point, not too long ago, he had the top two Chinese TV dramas for many consecutive weeks. Serenade of Peaceful Joy with Maggie Jiang and Hunting with Angel Wang. And my prediction for this Sunday's top drama actor is Wang Yibo. I believe he's going to retain his champion's crown from last week, and I believe that Zhao Liying and Xiao Zhan will be right behind him. And most likely, it'll stay like this for a couple of weeks. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section below. And before I let you guys go, it's time for me to answer a question from one of you, a fan who supports the channel by contributing on my Patreon page. Today's question comes from Carrie Ann White, who asks, Hello Marcus, happy holidays. Thank you so much for always keeping us entertained. Question for you, do you know when falling into your smile will air? Thank you for your question and happy holidays, Carrie Ann. Falling into your smile is an upcoming gaming drama starring Xu Kai and Cheng Xiao. They haven't officially announced the premiere, but on their Weibo page, they have the hashtag Yuku's 2021 drama list, so it will be sometime next year. They wrapped filming in May, that's 7 months ago, so it shouldn't be too long now. If I had to guess, I would say it'll air in the first quarter, maybe even in time for Valentine's Day, since it's heavy on the romance. 
And that's it for this episode. If you want to check out the t-shirt or other Chinese drama merchandise, there's a link to it in the description below. This show would not be possible without your support, so I thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed it, do subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification button for more updates. If you'd like to contribute, check out my Patreon page, where for a dollar or more a month, I'll answer one of your questions at the end of one of my episodes. So stay safe, and as always, I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers!